they threw her out. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. It's a, it's a concept that I, I still cannot get my mind around, that in uh, the fair city of Woonsocket, they threw the mayor out uh, a few weeks ago. Now, you know, Woonsocket News is really important to Woonsocket people. Uh, Woonsocket News is really important maybe to the border towns. Woonsocket News is important if there's some kind of financial need that requires all taxpayers throughout the state of Rhode Island to contribute. And by the way, we do, and you should know that. Uh, and so in many ways, uh, we all kind of live in the same melting pot, uh, but our provinciality generally uh, dictates that we don't spend much time thinking about what's going on in the other town. Uh, but this story has grabbed a little bit of soap operatic attention across the state, and I just wanted to spend some time with the, I would say this, it, it's kind of, you got to put a quote around, with the victim of this particular story, but I, I believe democracy is the victim here. I, I really do. And, and for those of you whose wheels begin turning and say, well, it's just like Trump, Dan, hell no. When you show me the corruption and when you show me the charges and when you show me the substantial comparison that's even a thousand miles close to what we dealt with in Washington, I might consider that as an argument, but it's not there. Now look, I'm not here to do the bidding for the mayor. She is here tonight. She can and has throughout her career spoken rather easily and well for herself. But I want to get her perspective a couple of weeks later. If by some chance you missed this, here's what 12 News ran a couple of weeks ago on the night. Disgusting. I have to vote yes. Longtime mayor of Woonsocket, Lisa Baldelli Hunt, is out of office for now, ousted by a city council vote of three to two. Meeting is adjourned at 1.33 a.m. on October the 6th. Baldelli Hunt making it clear she's not going anywhere. And I will be asking every single resident in the city of Woonsocket to take note of what happened here and how their voice was taken. So the 7,502 people who voted for me in 2020, I'm asking you to come out and to remove these four men. If the mayor is removed somehow, um, I guess she is the only one that is the voice for the people, despite the fact that seven of us are elected at the same time at large, representing the entire city. And we are that voice too. The city council voted in favor of the mayor's removal following two nights of hours-long testimony, hearings, and cross-examination of Baldelli Hunt after city councilwoman Denise Sierra submitted paperwork last month claiming Baldelli Hunt misused and abused her power in office by not acknowledging measures passed by the city council. These charges uh, Sierra said she worked on all summer. It was all orchestrated. It was let's do it before the election because if we do it before the election then what will happen is we can tarnish her and the people that she supports, people won't support them because now she's tarnished. In the past two weeks of meetings over this matter, Woonsocket City Hall was filled with her supporters, including mayors and leaders from area communities. 12 News also spoke with Governor Dan McKee about this on Tuesday. Hopefully there's a, a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a realization that executive branch and legislative branch have two different roles, and I have a, all the confidence in the world in Mayor Lisa Baldelli. Welcome. Thank you. What's it been like for the last couple of weeks? It's been a bit of a whirlwind. Mm. It's been actually very encouraging. I've been hearing from a lot of the constituents within the city. Uh, they've reached out to me via text message, phone calls, emails, cards, flowers. Uh, they're angry. They're very angry right now. For every politician, if I had a nickel for every politician who, when running for office, for instance, tell me that uh, the people's response has been incredible, and the you know, and then they get walloped by 62 points in an election. I, I'm not suggesting that. Uh, analogy fits here because a you're going to be reinstalled on mm -hmm. December 6th I think right yes. uh, as the mayor because you're running out of post uh, at the same time there's an echo chamber effect I think that comes with all 
folks. I mean, there are not mm -hmm. a lot of people they think they're going to tell you that, you know, you did a lousy job, you deserved it, be thrown out, and right. ha, 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 mm -hmm. right? So have you been able to kind of get to 36,000 feet and, and, and take an elevated analysis of, of how this whole saga has broken down for you? Yeah, so Other than <coughs> cards, letters, and, and, right. and, and, and hang in their leases. Right. Type of thing. So, uh, generally speaking, uh, I'm out in public. I'm out in public every single day. I see constituents every single day. I'm talking to them every day. And you always have this base of folks who just don't support you. And they're there, and that's, that's okay. That's what government is. But I'm also a realist, and I try to make certain that when I'm listening to people, and I'm evaluating what's happening, that I am being a realist. I mean, I was in the legislature. You'll hear elected officials say, oh, I can't support that bill. I got so many phone calls, you know, regarding it. And then, you know, they got three phone calls, right? So mm -hmm. I, I am a realist like that. This is not about me. This is about the fact that 7,502 people voted, and they were silenced. They were gagged. Their votes were stripped. And it was done by these five individuals, uh, and they took away their voice. You know, this. I, I'm not apt to just carry anybody's water on this program, but I can't agree more. It is about you. They threw you out. Well, but it's, but it's, it, the, the it's about democracy. I, I, the, the reason I got engaged in, in, in an interest and in, in followed it and watched the, the, what I thought was a complete circus act mm -hmm. in, in terms of how this hearing you know, went down with judge, jury, and, and prosecutor all, all from the same body, fed, by the way, with an archaic city charter mm -hmm. that allowed them to do so. Uh, that needs to get changed. I don't know if this council, if it actually replicates itself and the same people get elected for the new year, will actually go through. Like, they're not going to evaluate that the process by which they threw you out needs to be Correct. remodeled. Mm -hmm. So that's weird. What's the history on that, by the way? 50 years ago, somebody wrote into the charter, any particular elected official can literally try another elected official mm -hmm. in front of a, a council body, pardon me, and, and effectively throw them out. Did I miss some kind of historical and socket story that should appear yeah. in the history books I, somewhere? I, don't, I wasn't born in the 50s, so I'm not close, but me not neither. the 50s. I know. So I'm, I'm not really sure about that, but I do know this, that the charter needs to, we need to have a charter commission every 10 years. How they... When's the next one? Now. Now It when? is now, like this year. So we're due to have... 23? Uh, well, actually, we could have done it in 22, but each time I, I mentioned it to our city solicitor, his response was, oh, it's a lot of work. You have to hire an attorney. You know, you don't want to do that right now. And here we are, no, of course, now, as I put all the pieces together, I recognize why he probably did not think uh, it was a good idea to be working on that during this 2022 calendar Listen, we, we don't have enough time in the day to, to I had uh, the mayor on the radio for an hour and a half, plus and minus commercials, uh, uh, so it's so hard. But John D. Simone is your city solicitor, mm -hmm. um, high-ranking guy in the legislature formerly, contemporary of yours. Mm -hmm. You brought him in. Yes. Be careful what you ask for. And he put me out. What happened? John can count. And our charter states that to remove a city solicitor, the mayor can put forward a resolution and needs four votes. The city council can put forward an ordinance and they need five votes to remove the solicitor. So we know that we have a council that's divided basically in a 5-2 split. So he realizes that those five individuals could have passed an ordinance and removed him as soli city solicitor. Okay. Well, he plays an instrumental role in, I think, one of the big uh, sagas here, and that is the police contract. That is the, that is the thing that I think is the most compelling. And when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about that. Stay with us. They are bullies, they have been bullies, they'll continue to be bullies, and not only do they bully here, but they bully in their workplace, and they bully the employees here. 
So the city councilors who are instrumental in, in tossing you out based on the adjudication process that they went through would assert that you're the bully, that you've ignored them, that, that they put through uh, resolutions and ordinances, laws, theories, uh, whatever, uh, that you don't act on them, mm -hmm. that you turn your back on them, that you don't report to them, that you don't uh, provide financial documentation on a monthly basis like they need, uh, and that the, the big enchilada that you wouldn't uh, execute what they had negotiated um, between uh, the legislative body and the police union, which is a brand new contract. Mm -hmm. that, that there's a level of belligerence that you have, uh, my words, uh, that you have uh, as an MO that required them to toss you out? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, if you put forward a resolution or an ordinance that is not legal, I am not going to follow that resolution or ordinance. And I think we learned that three of the nine charges they put forward, was pr it was proven that Denise Sierra who created this the counselor. this city councilor. The prosecuting counselor. Correct. Who began with this censorship back in September of 21, I believe, based on three charges. I don't want to jump in here, but follow this. They censured you, mm -hmm. and, they, and, and, and they talk about it. And all you have to do is go back to, go, go to the Woonsocket website and watch this meeting. I, it's fascinating. Get popcorn and watch this thing. <laughs> it's, it's something. But it was kind of like, we already sent you to bed. Right. Uh, last night at 11 o'clock and you went out again mm -hmm. and since you went out again even though we censured you for being late you're now grounded for two yes. years that that was the disposition mm -hmm. and it seems to me that their censorship if I'm not mistaken was actually on the basis of these three charges correct that they then themselves threw out as invalid correct got that mm -hmm. yeah so the foundation of why this started this censorship fell apart the, fell apart so there's no foundation. But the big story for me has, and I, listen, I followed municipal government all of my young career, and to this day it still flavors how I look at things. Executive branch negotiates contracts, sends it to the, to the, to the legislative branch for ratification. Correct. John Ward, uh, who I, in the past I've had tremendous respect for, it's dwindling based on uh, his, the, the way he's comporting himself right now. Uh, but he would suggest that, that, that language both in the, in the statute and in state law uh, is either silent or, or, or allows for mm -hmm. the legislative branch to actually take on this executive role and negotiate mm -hmm. and pass its own contract and force you to execute it by issuing paychecks or pay raises and the like. Um, your response to that is what? Well, for, first of all, it's it, would be it's an, it would be an anomaly in, in, in municipal government, not only in Rhode Island, but throughout the, the nation, mm -hmm. for that to be true. Correct. But they believe what they want to believe. They have a city solicitor who tells them that they can do it. Who you hired. Who I hired. And so this is one of their strong basis for my removal. Um, so they immediately, you know, as, as Councilman Gillette said, before the hearing, we're going to remove her and take over City Hall. Those were his word, words to some constituents. So they came on in and passed and, but, and but moved this contract you forward. You couldn't get a deal done for some three years. Why right. not? Well, because were you I had, Were you negotiating? John DeSimone was negotiating. The, the charter assigns the solicitor to be, or is that your discretion? The city solicitor, historically, you have a labor attorney who negotiates. Yeah and he would negotiate and generally speaking I would come in at the end once he would get the negotiations were you close to a point. To a deal? We were. We were. And then insert Jim Knoyer, Councilman Knoyer. Who independently, entrepreneurially created began negotiations himself alone with the police union, correct? Right. So he called a meeting. They called a meeting and he came forward with his spreadsheet and said, this is what I want to offer to the union. So you guys are banging back, you're going back and forth mm -hmm. for a lengthy period of time. Too long. Why was it too long? Too long. Well, first of all, we have in writing from different unions as well. Between meetings, John D. Simone would have very long periods of time. He'd cancel meetings. He'd show up late to okay, meetings. Okay, so you're to put it. So, it's it's a, it's so primarily his responsibility for the tardiness exactly. of this thing. Okay. Exactly. So, again, folks, 
I, and I wrote in my Valley Breeze column about this, to which Mr. Knoyer, you know, had a fit, suggesting I had my facts incorrect. I wrote, without authorization, the city council approved the contract. My point was, of course they voted on the contract, mm -hmm. but they never authorized him formally no. as a body to actually begin negotiations. Correct. They took his, for lack of a better term, ad hoc work. Yes. Hey, hey, by the way, we're not getting a deal done. Uh, uh, Baldelli Hunt can't get it done. I got it done. Let's mm -hmm. vote on this. Correct. And they went ahead and they passed it, mm -hmm. wanted you to sign it, mm -hmm. and wanted you to execute it. Correct. And for reasons of both that process, I'm guessing, and some specificity about use of federal funds, you said no. Correct. I was not going to set a precedent and sign that contract and tie the hands of future mayors as well. And the reality is it's this. It's mild anarchy, by the it, way. It, it is anarchy. And the reality is this. The executive branch negotiates, the legislative branch ratifies. If they don't like what the executive branch puts forward, they send it back and they say, do a better Keep job. Keep trying. If you allow the legislative branch to negotiate and to ratify, you could have a council such as this, who, who's chaotic, and, and you know the majority of them, not all of them, who says, you know what? We're going to negotiate her right into bankruptcy we are going to negotiate every union contract in this city, and we are going to give them raises that are so generous that we put this city right back where it was in 2009 or 2013. Uh, I, 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 honest to God, uh, uh, the mayor is not my cousin. She mm -hmm. didn't drop a brown bag in for the show. Uh, you know, we've known each other and been casual for hello, working. There's nothing here. I'm telling you, what, what camera am I on? Bring me, Manny, bring this. I, I am telling you, independently, all due respect to the mayor, I have never seen this in government for all the years I've been covering it. No matter what the people in Woonsocket hear from this city council about what they did to take the reins on this contract negotiation, understand it's not just an anomaly, it is a one-off historically in the state and maybe in the country. We'll talk more about it when we come back. It's not factual. And I hope the people recognize that and take them out of office on November 8th. All right, so, and by the way, I don't think I've ever taken the camera back like that in, in that way. I, I, that, that's how strongly I feel about what the Woonsocket City Council has done. Uh, you're going to be the mayor on December 6th. You don't know what the council is going to look like. I do not. You're running a slate of four candidates to try to take uh, the four remaining that are running that voted you out, out. Do you have a realistic shot of, of, of shaking this thing up, or is it just... So we have seven candidates, actually. Yeah. Uh, so we have seven counselors. Uh, two of the counselors uh, who are there currently uh, a very respectful, yeah, their name good is quality, uh, Councilwoman Gonzalez and Councilman Susie. Susie, right, okay. And then five additional, because remember, we have four remaining, and Councilwoman Denise Sierra right. um, is not running because she didn't get her signatures uh, in. You're, so, you know, I had wrote that, written that they kind of, they gave you license to just kind of roll around, and <clears throat> have you been going door to door with this slate of candidates? So we've been working every single day. And my message to the voters of Woonsocket is, is simply this. Give us a chance to show you what we can do in Woonsocket without having to work with people who, I would say, enjoy turmoil and controversy. We have a lot before us. We have a lot of projects. People will say, you know, who are listening to this thinking, Dan, uh, Lisa Baldelli Hunt is no wallflower. No, I'm not. Somebody who supports you mm -hmm. very much said to me the other day, hey, listen, not for nothing. She loves this. I love it. I don't, I don't think it's good for the city. I think it's a black eye on the city. It's a direct black eye from them. But you don't shy away from confrontation. I, I am not going, no, I am not going to shy away from these individuals. I will not do that. I was elected to lead the city. I've been leading the city for nine years. I'm going to continue to lead the city. I always do it in the best interest what of happens, Woonsocket. You, go, you get back in. Mm -hmm. What, what are they doing with the police contract now? So, Councillor Gendron, who is the, the president, who, by the way, is the, is, is the maestro of the hearing. 
He's adjudicating the problem, not adjudicating, but he's regulating the process. That evidence can come in, that evidence can't. It's like, what? He he's the heir apparent. Mm -hmm. He yes. becomes the mayor. Is he, has he signed the raises that came in the contract that you have, that you won't, in this interim period, have the raises been paid to the police officers? My understanding is that was one of the first things he did after his first full day in office, which was that Friday he proceeded to fire an employee in our planning department and then came out publicly in a statement and said that he did not fire any full-time person. Well, he did. This young man was working full-time. He did not receive benefits, but he was working full-time. And he and John DeSimone instructed the personnel director and the director of planning to fire was this individual. Was he instrumental in this, in this saga, or it was just... I don't know why they did that. I don't know if they okay, saw so his well, face. Okay, so well, look, it's a big, it's a big city it, government. It, but but they're gonna, those police officers are going to get the prescribed raise yes. in that contract. You yes. were saying you actually wanted to give them more in the contract that you wanted to do. I wanted to design it differently. What are you going to do? Are you going to respect that contract going forward because it was signed by the interim mayor and I guess is legal if... Uh, uh, what, what's, what's, your le what, what's your option? Well, actually, he signed it before I was removed because when I told them that I wouldn't sign it, this is what I'm trying to explain about John Simone in this council, they proceeded to put legislation forward saying if the mayor doesn't sign the contract, the president of the council has permission to. So he signed the contract. As the president of the city as council? As the president of the city council. Well, well, do you have any legal options to contest the legitimacy of that contract going forward when you reinstall as mayor? Well, we will certainly look at it. And, and who would be your legal ally, given at least inside the city hall budget, the city solicitor is not going to be your ally? Well, the, the, there is one piece of good news. The city solicitor, quote unquote, travels with the mayor. So the term of the mayor the city solicitor's term ends when the mayor's term ends. All right, this saga is, is incredible. I only have a minute here. Um, do you think they'll try this again if they all get back in? I don't put anything past them. Th this is not about them leading the city of Woonsocket. This is about their personal agendas that they have, which these agendas are not, they are not in the best interest of the residents of our city. And I hope that's clear to them. I would like to show the residents of Woonsocket just what government is supposed to look like by changing the dynamic on that council. Right. Stay tuned, right? Stay tuned. Right. Good luck in the election. Thank so, you. <laughs> uh, final word we come back. We got to go. God bless Woonsocket. Good night.